Wednesday, January 22nd, 2021. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And today's show, I'm pleased to have a Norwalk right-handed pitcher from the baseball program, and he'll be going to Siena in the fall. His name, Alistair Morin. Alistair, it's great to be able to have you on, man. Thank you for having me. You know, first and foremost, I want to say congratulations on making your commitment to Siena. I feel like through all the stresses that have been through COVID and just everything else, to be able to know where you're going to school in the fall must really feel like a monkey is really off your back. Oh yeah, it was a it was a huge sigh of relief at the end of the summer. Uh, very excited for the future. Awesome, and we'll be talking about that later on in this podcast. First, mm-hmm. I kind of just want to start out. Just give me a little bit of as far as your your athletic. You know, before going to Norwalk, did you play any other sports? Or was baseball kind of your main sport growing up? Uh, when I was growing up, I I was really into playing soccer. And I always loved watching football, but my mom never let me play. She thought I would get hurt. Uh, and then my dad's, my dad's only rule to me was that I had to be a Yankee fan. So through that, I got into baseball. And I've loved it ever since. Uh, um, I, I quit playing soccer around nine-ish. And then um, the, my whole family has been uh, into baseball, but they've been swimmers like my sister swims in college right now and so when I got to high school I tried it freshman year I lost like 15 pounds doing it so I stopped and now it's just been baseball since that do you think in some ways at an early age even though you stopped at nine years old the fact that you just didn't focus on one sport kind of helped your body as far as not trying to I mean you think about if you go to the gym eight eight, you know eight or nine times in a row you're going to get tired and kind of want to get away from it. Do you think that kind of helped in some way? Yeah, I definitely think it's important for every kid out there to, to um, be into multiple sports um, when they're, especially when they're young. Um, I mean, it works out, all sports work out different muscles and muscle groups. So it's very important. Um, Yeah. I'm super thankful that I was able to do that. Now, as far as once you quit soccer and you focused mainly on baseball, how did you keep yourself from not getting burnt out? Because that's the word I was trying to get to earlier. How did you keep yourself from not being like, all right, I just want to quit playing because I'm just so tired of the constant beating that my body's taking? Um, I mean, it was, it was tough. But uh, when I started playing baseball, I wasn't a pitcher at all. So I didn't really get into that whole workload and getting that sore too quick. Um, I was a shortstop and second baseman. So I was a middle infielder and I was also really slow at the time. So it wasn't like I was, I was um, beating myself up during the games. Um, There was no, there were, yeah, I didn't really have much pain. It wasn't me dying to go back to play soccer. Uh, I got everything out of there. And that's when, that's around when I started doing some workouts and that was where I got, that's where I got the strength and everything that I missed. So when did you become, as far as a pitcher, when did you start to, you know, try to get yourself on the mound? Uh, When I was about 11, I was playing in a, I was playing in a league for the spring. And um, one of my coaches just threw me in to a game just to try me out because I had the right body size for it. I was a little bit taller than everyone. And I got in with a bases loaded jam and I struck out the side to get out of it. And after that, I became one of the pitchers on the all-star team. So I guess it worked out a little bit nice. It's almost like, look what I found. I mean, how many, I mean, you're a baseball guy. I'm a baseball guy. I mean, how many, how many guys have you either read about if you read about baseball, which I'm sure you do, but you see guys who you don't even think would be pitchers and then either at a young age or even sometimes when they're drafted or through the college ranks, their coaches are like, hey, let's just try and see what happens and mm-hmm. come to find out you wonder where was this the entire time? So for you, I'm, it must have been kind of like, well, this pitching thing may not be so bad if I struck out the side. Maybe I should continue with it. Yeah, and I, I can only probably think of two or three guys who I know that that pitched early in Little League um, that were playing with me in the summer and with this team in the spring. Now, as far as when you started pitching, I almost feel like going back to what I said about playing soccer, not getting burnt out as far as playing baseball and such. I almost feel like because you played shortstop and second base, you have more bullets in your arm right now than some kids who were pitching since they were six or seven. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah, definitely. 
Um, just and even just learning the game from different positions. That's also another super important thing that I was lucky to have growing up. Um, it you learn the game a whole different way. Um, especially uh, I also started catching when I was little. Um, and so I learned how to run a game that way. And that's sort of the mental state I'm in when I start to pitch. And yeah. Geez, I think the Rays in Oakland would love you because you play <laughs> multiple positions. I mean, all, I mean, if you were ambidextrous, I think the Dodgers would even like you too. <laughs> the Dodgers don't need any more help, man. <laughs> hey, what was I saw that they were looking at uh, who was it? They were looking at DJ Yankee fan, and Bauer. Yankee fan. Yeah, and they were looking at Bauer too. So you say they don't need help? Well, you know, there you <laughs> Still go. Still out there. <laughs> hey, man, I think the big guys right now too. Yeah, exactly. But hey, man, I think it's great that you were able to find the mound and be able to see, you know what, maybe you can continue with this. When you first started pitching, did you, again, I'm sure you took it serious, but as with anything, sometimes your talent goes above more than kind of your seriousness, because sometimes you just have more talent than what you're seeing in front of you as far, on the as, far as on the field. Mm -hmm. When did you start taking pitching serious? I. Uh um, after my 12 year old summer, I, when we made the transition to the big field, I couldn't hit too well. So um, I started looking at, uh, at my future and I had a talk with uh, my coaches, my parents. At that point, I, I hit my growth spurt and I had sprouted up to, I believe, I believe five, nine or five, 10 at that point. And, and I knew I was gonna keep growing and I knew that I wanted to play baseball at the next level and in college. And what, and I didn't think of it as giving up on uh, hitting, but it was more so like I was having more fun. And especially when I'm hitting and when I'm in the field, my mind really just runs everywhere. And when I'm on the mound, it just feels like I'm almost in like my own space and in my own headspace. Like I think of it as my happy place. And it's like a Zen to me. It's just me and the catcher. It's soothing almost. It's almost like you're at home, you're at peace, right? Mm -hmm. 100%. That's awesome. I mean, again, going back to what you said about kind of playing shortstop and second base, even catcher, you kind of already thinking two steps ahead before anybody, you know, do you think in some ways too, that being, you know, playing multiple positions helps you on, you know, on the mound, because being, you know, one thing, especially now what we're seeing a lot of not just high school, but colleges and even the pro level, they're looking for the athletic pitcher. Do you think that because of that, you can kind of use athleticism to your advantage? Yeah, 100%. I, definitely when you look at uh, MLB players right now, you see the pitchers are becoming more and more athletic. Like we call ourselves athletes because we are. And man, like seeing uh, Marcus Stroman's play two years ago when he made the running across the field, bare hand diving throw to first. It's, I mean, there's, there's just a lot more that goes into the player player uh i mean the pitchers fielding than just being on the mound and throwing strikes it's all about the athleticism if you can field your position especially now with how important it is to keep guys off the base pass not because they're striking out or not striking out but because they're stealing bases but because mm -hmm. of the fact of the home runs and everything it's a lot i mean i've i forgot who said this but hitting a solo home run is much better than that two or three run jack that's kind of really the back the, you know kind of can really hurt you especially as a pitcher you know? Yeah. Now, when you were growing up from 11, 12 and so forth, what was your focus as far as pitching? Was it just to throw strikes? Were you trying to work on mechanics or just tell me about it? Uh, my mechanics then were extremely like spotty. And at that point I was starting to get uh, pitching lessons after I had my first few games. Uh, and at that point it was really just getting the ball over the plate. Uh, our team didn't really have too many guys who could pitch. We just had guys coming in and throwing three innings or so. And then when I started uh, changing, um, my dad was a coach and all the other guys who uh, were around me when I was doing my pitching workouts, um, they were the coaches for the all-star team. So they, uh, they started, sort of started implementing it. And there were a bunch of guys that in our 12 year old season started going the distance in our uh, all-star games was was the coaching as far as kind of were they because I know obviously coming through as both a baseball player through college and also now being a broadcaster some coaches like to push their kids throw the curveball early really want to get that down but there's a negative to that 
were the coaches that when you were coming up, were they pushing the curveball with you or was it more so just try to hone your skills? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Make sure that you're a pitcher, not a thrower. Um, I was, I was super stead, steadfast on figuring out my fastball and my two seam. So like right now I throw, uh, I grip my fastball three or four different ways, depending on how it's working. And, uh, so that was the main focus. And then when I sort of got a little bit older into 12 year olds and I started being able to put on weight a little bit at the time, um, that was when I started to learn more off speeds, but it started with the fast one change up and then it slowly moved into a slider uh, that didn't have too much rotation. And then when I got on the big field, we started learning the curveball and it slowly progressed up from there. Now, were you someone who as a pitcher, we know, and because I'm a former pitcher myself, the game is always changing. I mean, now it's all about kind of elevating the fastball, not so much even changing the eye level per se, but just trying to keep what is the launch angle of that uphill swing because everything's a home run. Is that something that's kind of slowly incorporated into your pitching, knowing that especially because you're going to college, and you're, you know, you're continuing forward, that's something that you have to continue on working on? Uh this uh, this past uh, winter and fall, um, I started ramping up my training and we started using uh, things like Rap Soto and Pitch Logic and other other tools like that to really like just learn more and sort of use the database to like break down my fastball and my other pitches. And so through that, we've been working on um, figuring out my horizontal angle, the movement, the vertical movement. So that's been helping out a lot. And I like sort of having the different viewpoint and uh, moves on training. So it's been it's been a big help so far. And for people who may not know, Rap Zoto measures the spin rate of the baseball, the rotations per minute. Now, being as young as you are, now I did not have Rap Zoto and all these technology things that people have nowadays. I almost feel like it's a benefit if you know how to use it and if you use it properly. And mm -hmm. just in the short time we've been talking, I feel like you're the kind of young man who really can digest it, but not have it overwhelm you. You kind of take it piece by piece what information is being given to you. I mean, that took me a while to really understand it. My coach had to basically like dumbify it for me to teach me about it. Uh, so I look at a few numbers on it. I try not to get too in my head about that because that's where I messed up when I was younger and I still can that way. Uh, like if there's a radar in the outfield on the wall, I can't look at it. It'll, it'll mess me up. Yeah, I think that's, that's something that you, you want to stay within yourself. But at the same time, like you said, the mound is your Zen. You want to stay mm -hmm. calm. But if you see, like, for example, you top out 87 to 88 miles per hour in your fastball, if you're only topping out at 85, you'll try to hump it a little extra. But then that could cause you to lose control. You, you know, you could leave a meatball down the middle and we're talking about a jack to left field, mm -hmm. you know, but that's great, man. I think being able to learn the information as far as, because like I said, with all this rap Zoto, uh, you talk about kind of blast motion, all the kind of new technology uh, information that's being able to be used and given is vastly important. And if you don't stay up to the date, up to times, you're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. I definitely still think that at the end of the day, the two most important things you can do when it comes to pitching is long toss and actually being on a mound, getting through the motion. Um, it's like, it's the same thing as if you're trying to increase a squat or a deadlift, the best thing you can do is squat and deadlift. And I'm glad you mentioned the long toss. Cause I always like to talk, you know, cause I saw pitchers when I was coming through the ranks, as far as at Albertus, some guys long tossed, some didn't, some worked out quite a few didn't, <laughs> but we're not even going to talk about that. But although I will say, shout out to Mike Hughes, who's your former coach, right? Former, yeah, coach, former pitching former, coach. Former pitching coach. Great young man. Probably had the best flow in the GNAC at the time, but <laughs> knew more about pitching than people realized. But because he was a quiet kid and really didn't say a lot, people kind of thought that he was just this quirky, funny, odd, maybe, maybe <laughs> odd kid at the time, but very smart kid. And you were blessed to be able to have him as a pitching coach because he knows a lot when it comes to pitching. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, he knew not to uh, like overwhelm us with it. He really taught us it the right way. And that's at the end of the day, that's if you know how to teach it, then it's a blessing. But going back to what you said about kind of the long toss, 
just take me into your, I guess, pre-start routine as far as the five-day regimen. Just take me into that. So uh, throughout the week, uh, so for high school, we'll have games Monday, Wednesday, Friday, depending on how the schedule plays out this year. Sometimes the Friday gets switched for a Saturday. Um, so usually, um, so two days before my start, well, basically every day I'll do my weighted balls no matter what. And I have a routine I go through, which isn't too much. Um, then I'll go into my throwing, which consists of moving out to long toss until, uh, until I get to my 80% of my max usually. Um, and then I'll move it in and on my way back, I start doing pull downs, which is just a pro hop into a throw and trying to keep it as much of a, a line as I can. Then when I get about, about 80 to 60 feet in, uh, um, from the from my partner, I'll start working on uh, spin stuff, movement, all that. Um, then the day before I I have to pitch, I won't long toss. I'll do my normal throwing. I'll do extra stretching, extra drinking of water, extra recovery. But I'll throw a 15 pitch bullpen, not full speed. And then the day of it just consists of. I'll go out maybe 160 feet and throw pull downs. Then I get into my throwing on the mound. Now, is this a routine that, because obviously going back to, I mean, your all-star, you know, your favorite pitcher at the time, even though you were young, Randy Johnson, you know, Mariano Rivera, who I think was probably the best closer that will ever pitch in of baseball. All all, exactly. All time. Anybody who says otherwise is, nuts for multiple reasons fans. <laughs> exactly i mean just put on the tape i mean the guy never blew a freaking save come on now but has your routine i'm sure it's changed but it almost sounds like you have kind of where you found a routine that worked and you stuck with it yeah it's definitely evolved over time but the biggest thing for me going out on the mound was just to figure out how to be comfortable and how to be feel as much as myself as i can on the mound and I've taken a lot of things from Randy Johnson, Mariano Rivera, and, and especially Trevor Bauer, because I like the way he trains. I just, I, I go out there trying to be as comfortable as possible. And I figured out a, a routine that works. I implemented the long toss and the 15 pitch bullpen. I started doing that last summer. So it's not, it's always changing. Now, do you know early on, like, okay, my stuff feels pretty good. I think I'm going to have a good day. Or, oh, I'm missing my spots pretty, you know, pretty bad. I don't know if it's going to work today. Do you know early on or is it kind of like, well, once I know on the mound, then I'll really know what's going on? Uh, sometimes the route, like the build up to actually getting in the game, I can feel um, off that day and then uh, go on the mound and sort of feel like locked in when I'm there. But I'll do like everything I can to lock in. Sometimes it's not there. Sometimes it's really there and then I'll not do the best on the mound that game but it just it is what it is I can feel it sometimes though in this 15 pitch bullpen I've I've found very intriguing because a lot more younger pitchers like you I've really have noticed even going back to a couple years ago have started to implement this and even some guys at the college and the pro ranks now I was a guy who and I'm sure Hughes could tell you if you ever asked him I threw so much in the bullpen because I was I mean he was left-handed. I'm left-handed. I was paranoid that I would never be prepared enough. But mm -hmm. then the, the negative side to that is you burn a lot of your bullets in the bullpen. So is yeah. that a part of the philosophy as far as throwing less in the bullpen, save more in the tank for the game? Uh, I think I think so to an extent. Uh, I, I, throw, I throw a good amount in the bullpen, um, but that's just till I get to a point where uh, – I want to feel like hot. Like I sort of want to go out there, um, sort of sweaty. Like you've seen uh, Aroldis Chapman, that guy like sits on a bike for an hour before he gets out there. Uh, I, I sort of like feeling feeling like that when I go out there. Like I think of it as going out cold if I'm not. So I definitely feel like, I feel like it could take away maybe 10, 15 pitches, but I'd rather have those max effort in the in the innings. And as you're going through, as far as the game progresses, is there, has there ever been a point where you felt like you were totally locked in 
And then was there a time where you felt like, all right, my stuff is not there. I have to figure something out quick. Otherwise my coach is going to yank me. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It, it, it's just the way of the road. Sometimes like I've had games where I hit three or four guys in an inning and I've had to find a way to recover from that. I got pulled, but I had to figure something else out for next time. <laughs> I'm sure you figured it out though. You seem like yeah. the kind of kid that goes back to the drawing board and goes, all right, yeah, all right, I figured it out. Let me get back on there so I can figure it out now. Yeah, I, def I do a lot of self, uh, like self thinking after just by myself. Um, I sometimes write it down in a little journal I have, uh, but. Yeah. Now, do you write on that journal after your start? Do you wait till after the game? I'm sometimes I'll write. I usually only did it for bullpens, but I have it right here. Uh, I, I write like a prayer before I go out there. Um, and then I'll just write how I feel, what I did. If like, cause that's how I wanted to figure out how things affected me. So that's how I figured out my routine through, through this. Now, do you write the same prayer before? Is it the same one or is it something different? Uh, different. Uh, I'll do a verse of the day, but I read the same one every morning and night. Really? Can yeah. you, can you share a verse if you don't mind? It's uh, the one I read every night is the, our father, um, is our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our day, our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. That's awesome. That's real. I mean, I don't, I was somebody who was religious. I still am, but I know some people tend to try to keep it separate from sports and otherwise, but has anybody said anything to you? And I'm sure it hasn't been in a negative way, but has anybody ever expressed to you their opinion as far as kind of what you do with the helm, you know, our father and all that? Yeah. I've had uh, some guys who um, go over the same prayer with me. Um, and I've been, the, my teammates have been super acceptive of my somewhat weird tendencies sometimes. And they've, they've been very helpful with it too. Like I, I have uh, three or four guys that I'll pray with before a game. That's great, man. Hey, at the end of the baseball team sport brings everybody together and to be able to have something like that, even if it's only a couple still, those are, that's very important to be able to have. And also too, it helps you as well, because then you, I mean, I'm sure Trevor Bauer feels like an outsider, but you oh, don't, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's a little odd in, you know, in and of itself, but to be able to have that, that connection, I feel like it's just, it's another sense of, for a pitcher, especially, it gives you just like how the mound is your Zen. That is your pre-Zen to the Zen. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I love it. Hey, that's great, man. Whatever works for you, but also too, you stick to who you are. You don't try, and that goes back to the pitching side. If you're a kid who throws 75, who throws 75 you know, miles per hour, don't, don't think you could throw 90 one day. Stay true to who you are. Same thing for you. You know who you are both on the mound and off the mound. So you stay with it and away we go. Right. And that's, that's, that's what it seems like being an epidemic nowadays because everyone gets wrapped up in the, the numbers game. That's, and it's, I'm not going to say it's not for everyone, but like there's people who just focus on the number part and they're like, I need my fastball to be this number, but they can't locate it whatsoever. And then they're just lost. Yeah. Again, people, people lose sight of so many things. I think this pandemic has taught us a lot, both mm -hmm. good, bad, and indifferent, but a good for you, man, you're going to be going to, to Siena in the fall. Just take me into the recruitment process as far as was Siena the only school? I, I almost doubt that they were the only school. Just tell me about that. Um, I'm not going to let, like name the schools, but I, I was in talks with um, a few other schools. Um, going into the summer, I had no college interest. Uh, well, from schools, I, I knew I wanted to play in college. And um, huge shout out to coach Pat Vigilio. Uh, he's, he's super like headstrong on getting all of us happy to where we want to be. And he really pushed us and that's what a lot of us needed. And so going through that summer, it was just straight hard work. It was grinding in the 95, 100 degree heat every day, running our poles, running our sprints, doing our, our ab work. Um, and then, 
yeah, just all the pitching coaches, Coach Bullet. Uh, they just they they he's super close with uh, the Sienna coach, and he got us in contact. But throughout the summer, it's just you couldn't have a off day. It was almost like perfection had to be your your motive always, which it should be. And it was just showcase after showcase. Uh, with the COVID stuff, we couldn't really do much that wasn't showcases. Um, so, and those got to be uh, televised or streamed on YouTube. So that's how we got our stuff out to coaches. And then a lot of it was, we had to send stuff through Twitter and just get video of ourselves Through the winter, I had to, um, I mean, through the beginning of quarantine, I had to throw into a recycling bin because I couldn't get any catchers out here. Jeez, just got to find any which way to, yeah. to be able to get, you know, I, I've always said that. Social media could be two things. It could be a blessing or it could be a curse. I mean, Herm Edwards, I don't know if you're – I'm sure you're a football fan. Yeah, I'm a football fan. Oh, good. Who's your favorite team? Patriots. Uh, okay, well, I did like you. Now I don't like you. I'm just kidding. I, was, I get a lot of mixed responses about that. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure Coach Hughes probably gets on you because his team, the Giants, beat your team twice in the Super Bowl. Yep. And that's the only <laughs> argument they can get. <laughs> yeah. You are right. You're hundred percent right. It's the two biggest arguments, but you're right. You're right. Yeah. But anywho, to go back to Herm Edwards, he always says, think before you press send. And I think mm -hmm. going back to, as far as getting the information, getting the video, because of where we are with COVID, the best way to be able to get yourself out there. And this goes for all sports, not just baseball is to utilize social media. And it sounds like you did that. Mm -hmm. It definitely had to be a big change, but uh, slowly getting video out there from the past too, which was hard to recover that sort of stuff. But it was it was little things that go a very long way, especially when it comes to that whole recruiting world. You know, maybe we've just about run out of time, but I do have one more question for you real quick. That was quick. <laughs> what, what, I know it too, it flies by when we're having fun. Am I right? Yeah. What, what was your reasoning for choosing Sienna College? Why'd you choose it? Um, when I got up there, it was uh, it was almost just like an, an emotional sort of attachment. Like me and my mom, when we were leaving, we sort of it just like clicked. Like I knew it when I was there that I was this is where I want to be. We were sitting there talking to Coach Rossi at the baseball field, um, and I got to meet some of the guys on the team, uh, the other recruits from my class. And when I was going around the campus, the campus is beautiful. There were so many people wearing. Um, all Sienna stuff. And I loved that feeling. It was like, I knew they loved their school because they wear it on their chest and on their back 24 seven. And the campus was awesome. It was everything I was looking for. And, and they have my major and it was just, I felt happy when I was there. And that's the most important part. If you feel comfortable, if you feel like you can, you know, progress in your future, however long it goes, either you graduate and get your degree or you get your degree and you have a chance to play pro ball at the next level you know, you want to be able to feel like you are comfortable and you feel like you can be, like you said, on the mount. I know I keep referring to that, but it's, I just love that. The Zen, you want to be able to feel that. And it sounds like you found your home, which is a little bit bigger than the mound, but yeah. seeing it being your Zen. Definitely. That's awesome, man. But Hey, I really do appreciate you coming on, you know, hopefully you can come back on, you know, either in the fall or, you know, whenever your schedule works, but it was great to be able to have you on. You were a lot of fun to be able to talk to. Definitely. You too. Thank you so much for doing this. And no problem, buddy. Anytime. Now wrap things up in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. And remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. And I'm on a journey to find them all. Have a good one, everybody. And be well.